Give me another song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. children. Thank you. To y'all be the glory. Shabbat shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Yah is good. Hallelujah. He is so good. Yes, this is the day that Yah have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Mm -hmm. Today's message is titled Righteous and Unrighteous Wives, Ananias and Sapphira versus Priscilla and Aquila. This, it's something that need to be taught to our families our brothers and sisters this is a lesson that we all need to understand we all need to know because there's so much that's being taught against us and because of it we're saying um broken families as a matter of fact and we're seeing tragedies happen that was a tragedy what happened to ananias and sapphira but we're going to get into this because we want to see what they did in, in to, to be judged like they were. And we need all of you women out there to pay attention. All of you men out there need to pay attention too. All of you husbands and wives need to pay attention because this is a knowledge that we need to know. Okay. Even if you're not married, this, yes. this um, lesson is you're going to see very uh, clearly that this is about whether or not we choose to obey Yah or man. Yes. So even if you're not married, this is yes. going to be a very powerful lesson. And we're not just going to deal with Ananias and Sapphira, Priscilla and Aquila. We can just get so much in the title. But uh, we're going to look at other biblical couples as well. Yes. And again, this is a very important uh, lesson uh, for the body of uh, Yahusha. That's right. Uh, for us all to get and to take heed. That's right. Hallelujah. So let's go dive right into it. We're going to go to um, Ananias and Sapphira um, first to that story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sapphira was a wicked wife and she was married to a wicked man. <laughs> they both might not have started out like that, but things, because they were believers. Mm -hmm. They were numbered among those that had probably received a Ruach. They were all together. This is right <laughs> after the, the Ruach came and Yah was establishing the assembly, right? Mm -hmm. And so pay attention because this is very important that you get this story, okay? This is Acts chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 1 through 11. One thing that um, I want to make uh, clear in this lesson as well is that um, we all, when we're doing our studying, it's very important that you look at 
more than one translation. A lot of people are still using uh, the King James Version. Um, a lot of people are, have gone over to the C4 or the Hallelujah Scriptures. Uh, you have to make comparisons, and it's been very yes. clear um, in studying that you have to do this because these yeah. translators, the pen of the scribes, yeah. can throw you off. Let me tell you something. When we do studies, my, my wife will tell you, I probably have at least eight different Bibles that I study from. Mm -hmm. Eight different Bibles. Not and to mention concordances. And Explore. Yeah, and Bible Explore <laughs> yeah. here. That, and this Bible Explore actually have 20 different Bibles in it. Mm -hmm. 20 different Bibles that I compare translations and things with. So it's important that you that you do that. Okay, now this story here, Acts, is in Acts chapter 5. We're going to read verse 1 through 11. Okay, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. But a certain man named Chananyahu, Ananias, with Chaparia, his, his woman, Sapphira, mm -hmm. sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His woman also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Kepha said, Chananyahu, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Ruach HaKadosh and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own in your own power? Why have you conceived this in your heart? You have not lied unto men, but unto Yah. And Chananyahu, hearing these words, fell down and gave up his ruach. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his woman, not knowing what was done, came in. And Kepha answered, unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Then Kepha said unto her, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Ruach Yahuwah? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your man are at the door and shall carry you out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up her ruach. And the young men came in and found her dead, carrying her forth, buried her by her man. And great fear <laughs> came upon all the called out assembly and upon as many as heard these things. So they did wickedness together and they died together. You know? That's right. I want, I want to point this out to you, right? So pay attention. So these two conspired together to lie and they got things mixed up because they figured they were lying to men see that's why the scripture says you haven't lied to us you're lying to the ruach mm -hmm. see that's what happens with people when they do wickedness they don't realize that they could be doing this wickedness against yahuwah mm -hmm. because who set this thing up Mm -hmm. Yahuwah. Yes. That's why you got to be careful who you speak against. Yes. Because you don't know if Yahuwah is behind that person or is dealing with that person, right? Mm -hmm. Now pay attention. So now, here she was thinking, didn't even realize that he died. Three hours it went by. She come walking in, going to tell the same lie, and she dropped dead too. Now, this is a message because women, you got to understand that if your husband is going down a bad road, mm -hmm. you can't be like Sapphira and go down that road with him. The minute he came to her and said, "Hey, let's hold back part of the money," you know, I don't want to. I don't want to tell them exactly what we sold it for, whatever. She says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute! Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing this thing together. Why? Why should we back out?" And she said, that "She should tell him that's kind of being sneaky. That's not being righteous." She should have told him that, right? Because she could have saved his life. Had she did that, he could have probably said, oh, you know what, you, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe if he kept head, head strong, well, I'm going to do this. And then she could have said, well, I'm not going down that road with you. So that when he had died, she didn't know he had died. But when she went in there and when Peter had asked her, guess what? She would have said, 
no, nah, we, we, this is really what we sold it for. Yeah. This amount here. Mm -hmm. And then he would say, okay, well, because blessed it be lie. you because you didn't lie like your husband. You should be spared. But your husband is out, is dead. They buried him because he lied. And then she would be like, wow, I'm glad I didn't go down the same path Or oh, that my same husband. fear would have came on her too. Yeah. He dead. Yes. <laughs> it was that serious? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that same fear would have came on her that came on everybody else. That's because right. Because she would have seen the judgment of Yah right then and there on her husband. That's right. Yeah. And so we see in the scriptures, we see a lot of different things in the scriptures. Um, the, go ahead. Um, oh, no, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Then I'll, then I'll come Listen to this here. This is, this is something. We see a lot of different things in the scriptures, right? And one of the things we see in the scriptures is... These couples that do wickedness together usually die together. Mm -hmm. It's in the word. Yeah. You understand? Very clearly. Now, now that we are on this story of Ananias and Sapphira, yes. I want to bring some understanding to Listen. it. Okay. You do have those in today's time who liken themselves as the apostles. Okay. They can't hold a candle to the righteousness of the apostles. But they are putting themselves in the seat of the apostles because yes. they are today in, in today's time commanding yep. people to come and lay all I mean, lay everything at their feet. You literally have people using this awakening uh, for their own greedy gain, yes. and people are adhering to this. Yes. Now, when you're talking about a righteous assembly like the assembly in Acts, okay, mm -hmm. this is why the power of Yahweh is so strong to where. When the apostles said the same men that carried your husband out of here is going to carry you out, these people fell dead right away. And great fear came on the congregation. This was a checks and balance system. Yes. Okay. You don't do right. Your heart is wicked. That's why the scripture says, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? Because of the wickedness that was in his heart and in his wife's heart. This is why the, um, the apostles spoke. And the word came just like that. The, the punishment, right. the judgment came just like that. But yes. you do have people today in this awakening, so-called Israelites and so-called Christian pastors as well. They are using this laid at the apostles' feet scam. <laughs> yes. Yeah, lay it to increase feet. wealth unto themselves. But they are in error, all kinds of error. That's right. Now, Listen, y'all, we are in the hour where the Most High says, cry aloud and spare not. So if some of y'all don't understand why we are going down this path and why we are bringing the word the way we have been for the past few weeks, you got you to get on yeah. board with the truth. We are in that time right now where yep. the Most High is clean in house. This ain't got nothing to do with um, anything that might be going through your mind, <laughs> you see. We ain't sparing anything, in other we, words. We're going to swing yeah, the sword. We're right. going to swing the sword. To. Most High gave yes. me a dream, and I'm not yes. going to get into the details of this dream. That's right. But this dream was the Most High literally letting me know, this is what I want you to do. Yes. And so I know this is what I got to do. So y'all going to have to grinch your teeth a little bit because we're going right. to be swinging the sword. Okay? Guess what? The, the sword is two-edged. That's right. It, it cuts both ways. It cuts both ways. So don't think for one minute that Watchman and I ain't getting cut too. There That's are right. things that Yah is cutting us on. Sometimes Watchman speak, I'll be like, ouch, <laughs> you know, <laughs> vice versa. Likewise, yeah. So the word of Yah is quick and sharp. And it's, and it's very powerful. That's and so right. we got to understand that. But in today's time, we have so much wickedness going on and to where people are mixing the word of Yah, mixing it with their own words, and it's confusing right. people. You think you're dealing with righteous people, yeah. but you are not dealing with righteous people. You're dealing with shysters. And the Most High, is, is, is he's pulling the, the blinders off of some of your eyes, and he's pu pulling the wool off of those who have been deceiving a lot of people. Yes. It doesn't matter if you're in a Christian church or if you're <clears throat> an Israelite. But, again, that whole thing with the laid at the apostles' feet. Now, the sin was the fact that they lied. Now, it was bad that they held back because there was an agreement that everyone came into. They said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to establish this, and this right. is how we're going to establish it. It was done Every, by the Ruach, yeah. That's right, they, that everyone would be equal. We're going to. This is what we're going to do. And this was a particular assembly, y'all. Everybody was equal. See, yep. that's another thing, too. See, a lot of times when I see this going on, especially in the Christian church, I've seen it going on, right, when they try to push the same thing, everybody don't be equal. The pastor be living large, mm -hmm. well above the people. 
Right? And so, but notice this, everybody was equal, including the apostles were equal. They mm -hmm. weren't sitting back with something bigger and living larger than everybody else. They weren't sitting up in the king's castle like David. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and again, this was a particular community. This wasn't yes. all of the Israelites because they all weren't in that region. That's right. This was a group of people that came together. And this is how they established things for that, right. that particular um, congregation or that yeah. particular community. And so when you entered into that agreement that this is how things were going to be, See, a lot of people, I want to say this, too, because over the years, <laughs> over the years, we've heard people say this. You have people who believe that right now, today, we are supposed to establish this among anybody that's an Israelite. First of all, everybody ain't living right. Would you want somebody who's um, selling drugs and doing this and using drugs and robbing people and knocking folk upside the head to be a part? No, this was a righteous yeah. assembly of people. Yeah, because he'd take the money and do what with it, right? Right. This wasn't, you can't just say just because somebody's an Israelite, what, we supposed, you're supposed to sell everything you have and give to this one over here. And this person is selling and using drugs and robbing people and killing people. Lying and this doing all kinds of stuff. This was a group of yeah. people who established righteousness. Uh, the righteousness of Yah within themselves, right? And so that whole idea that um, everybody who um, is an Israelite is supposed to just split everything. First of all, we're scattered throughout the world. And second of all, even within the regions that we are in, you can't do this with everybody. It has been proven that there are backstabbers among us. And so therefore, yeah. the righteous assembly has to come together um, according to the leading of the Ruach HaKadosh. Right. And that's why it was so powerful when the apostles spoke. Yes. And they spoke that judgment on Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah. Now, what is this lesson talking about? A wicked, husband, a wicked wife versus a righteous wife. That's right. Okay. Sapphira, because she didn't cover her husband's authority. Yep, there because you go. Because she didn't cover her head. She allowed the wickedness that entered into his heart That's right. to enter into hers as well. And she was judged accordingly. She was judged accordingly. That's mm -hmm. right. See, that's, that's, that's why I say it's in the scriptures. It's, it's really clear in the scriptures. Now, I got some, I got some hard-hitting scriptures that I'm going to come and bring with you. And I want you to see this stuff. But we got some good examples here, okay? Let's go to the example of Ahab and Jezebel, okay? Yes. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 16. Verse 33, Sophia, I'm going to have you read it. <laughs> First Kings chapter 16, verse 33. First Kings chapter 16, verse 33. And Ahab made an Asherah, and Ahab did more to provoke Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, than all the sovereigns of Israel before him. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> it says Ahab did more to provoke Yahuwah and and to anger, provoke Yahuwah to anger than all the other kings before him. Mm -hmm. What what did he do? Well, first of all, he took a wicked wife, took a, a, foreign, a foreign woman to wife, who was a wicked woman, mm -hmm. took her to wife, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what this wicked woman did. Let's go to Acts, I mean, Kings chapter 18, <coughs> verse 4. Rebecca, you read it. Kings chapter 18, verse 4. 1 Kings. And it came to be while Isabel cut down. Jezebel. Yes, yeah, it says Isabel. Of Yahuwah, yeah. that Obadiah who had taken 100 Nibium and hidden them, 50 to a cave, and had fed them with bread and water. Okay, that's prophets. Took like 100 prophets. And yeah, it does say um, Isabel. In the. Yeah, yeah, another it, translation. Yeah, another translation because it wasn't no J. That's right. right. <laughs> There's some who, who people was always talking about Jezebel, Jezebel, Jezebel. Where actually her name was Isabel. Yeah, um, Isabel. Isabel. And you know what's amazing? In today's time, the name Isabel is made like one of those like it's a like beautiful nice, name. Little, yeah. Oh my daughter's name is Isabel. They it's put off like it's a yes. sweet little girl's name. Really. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was Jezebel. <laughs> I found it strange. You remember the show we watched a series of years ago? And the young lady's name was Isabel. Oh, yeah. She had all yeah. those powers and stuff. That yeah. was crazy, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought about it then. I said, man, that's kind of odd. They really calling her Jezebel. Right. Something, huh? So what she did was she, she killed a lot of um, uh, the prophets of, of Yah. And so uh, Obadiah had hid a hundred of the prophets because Jezebel mm. was killing them. Of Yah's prophets, right? Mm -hmm. That's how wicked this woman was, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at uh, Rebecca. Also read verse 13. Was it not reported to my master what I did when Isabel slew the Nebian, the prophets of Yahuwah, how I hid 100 men of the Nebian of Yahuwah? 50 to a cave and fed them with bread and water. Okay, there it is again. So it's letting you know she slew the prophets. That's what she did, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, Sophia, you read 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 25. Chapter 21, Indeed, there never was anyone like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, because Isabel, his wife, stirred him up. What? <laughs> she stirred him up, so he had this wickedness in him, but it just needed stirring up. So that's what she did. She stirred that wickedness up in him. Meaning she encouraged it. She encouraged she it. She supported it. She supported it. <laughs> you yeah. hear this? She encouraged it and she supported it. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so when you read this, right? So now look at look at the judgment that came upon Ahab and Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Second Kings. The Borum have you read this one. The Second Kings chapter nine. Second Kings chapter nine, verses five through ten. And when he came Behold, I'm going to start at four. Okay. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, both the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to you, O captain. And Yahoo said, Un unto which of uh, all us? And he said, to you, O captain. And he arose and went into the house and he poured the oil on his head. And he said unto him, Thus says Yahuwah, Aloha, of Yashrael, I have anointed you king over the people of Yahuwah, even over El Yashrael. Now, now, I'm going to tell you what's going on here. Elijah is anointing him. Okay, go ahead. And ye shall smite the house of Achav, Ahab, your master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the, the prophets. prophets. Yes. And the blood of all the servants of Yahuwah at the hand of Isabel. For the whole house of Achav shall perish. And I will cut off from Achav him that pisseth against the wall. And him that is shut up and left in Yashrael. And I will make the house of Achav like the house of Yeravim the son of Nevat. And like the house of Bisha the son of Akiyahu. And the, and the dogs shall eat Isabel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Now, pay attention here. This is the judgment now because they both sold to do wickedness. They both did wickedness together, right? It was a team thing, right? Mm -hmm. And they did it, and y'all said, that's okay, I'm going to anoint Jehu. And Jehu, you going you go and you deal with them. You're a king now. You're going to take your kingdom. <laughs> so Jehu was like, I'm king now? You know, Jehu. And he was like, I, okay, he took his sword. He went out. To, that's what he went for, to slay him, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at this, he says, there won't be no males. He's talking about males. He said, they're pissing against the wall. He said, ain't none of them are going to be. We're going we gonna to get rid of all of them. ain't going to be one of them left in Israel. Mm. Are you hearing this judgment? And then he said, and Jezebel 
it ain't gonna be nothing left because the dog's gonna eat every bit. It ain't gonna be nothing to bury. Mm. I don't want no memorial for Jezebel to be sitting on this earth. Wow. Y'all hear that? Mm. Mm. Woo! <laughs> and so I want to back it up a little bit on the story of Ahab and yes. Jezebel. Again, Listen. he was a wicked Israelite king. Yes. And the Most High said, nobody angered him as bad as Ahab. Yeah. Not one ruler angered him as much as Ahab did. <laughs> That's something. If I'm not mistaken, he was the line of Judah, correct? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, he was the king of Israel, and he was a wicked king who angered the Most High. And he married a foreign wife. And this mm -hmm. foreign wife had a lot of the prophets killed. Yeah. To the point where they had to hide the prophets to, to protect them from this wicked woman. Pay, pay attention. Let me say this real quick. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Watch this. Why did Jezebel have all the prophets killed? Because she had her own prophets. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't have Yah's prophets prophesying something different than what her prophets were prophesying. Yes. Wow, are you hearing this? Mm -hmm. So we're going to shut Yah up, shut up his prophets. You ain't going to be able to say nothing. And my prophets are going to speak and say what I need them to speak and That's say. That's right. That's right. Mm. And so when you look at this wicked couple. Yeah. Okay. You had um, the the um, spirit of Jezebel or the woman Jezebel, who was a foreign woman who did the same thing. Uh, people have to understand something about the, the Jezebel spirit. See, you got yes. a lot of people teaching about it. And they don't know what they are talking yeah, about. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking they about. They have no clue as to what they are talking about. And they always label. I see a lot of people labeling the daughters of Zion as Jezebel. First of all, when you see men doing that, you have to understand. Once you understand, they can't get you with that anymore. This is for the brothers and the sisters. Because what they are doing is they are throwing you off the real danger of the spirit of Jezebel that's alive yes. today. When you just call in a woman Jezebel because she's talking, if you understand the attributes of Jezebel, what was she doing? She was killing prophets. She was um, doing her husband's dirty bidding. He was a wicked king. Yeah. He wanted a man's land. He was coveting yeah. what another man had. And so his wicked wife conjured up in her mind, hmm, let me see yeah. how I can get that land for my man. Yeah. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to set the stage. She was a cunning, wicked woman, y'all. Yeah, listen. I'm going to have to set the stage to have yep. this man, this righteous man killed so that I can get my husband Ahab this land that he desires. Now, think for a moment. All of these daughters of Zion that some of these Hebrew Israelites are calling Jezebel, how many of them do you know that's out here um, getting having people killed for their land? Look, wait a minute, watch this, right? <laughs> the scripture says that Jezebel had these two men come up, right? Who lied on the man, right? So that they could stone him. And she calls all of Israel, all the leaders, which were men, all these men, the leaders of Israel, to sin and stone in that man. Mm -hmm. So what woman that they call in Jezebel is actually deceiving all the men? See, Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit deals with leaders. Yes. That's what it deals with. Don't deal with women. You see a woman just talking to her. That ain't no Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit deals with leaders. It likes to control the leaders of Israel. Yes. That's what it did in the past. So that it could cause the leaders of Israel to commit a horrible sin. Mm -hmm. That's what the Jezebel spirit does. You understand? Yes. <laughs> so a lot of these leaders that you see calling the daughters of Zion Jezebel. They are probably spiritually married to Jezebel. Wow. Well, not their this? wives. Not their wives. Their wives are innocent victims who cower down in the corner. They're afraid because their husband has said this, that, and the other. Right. And he calls them Jezebel to shut their mouths, to make them say, well, what, 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 you know, to make them afraid. A wife shouldn't be afraid of her husband. I'm That's sorry. Right. She shouldn't be afraid sitting, cowering down in fear from her husband. But they use that. To cause the daughters of Zion to be quiet because the daughters of Zion, we have a commission. We are supposed to warn our brothers about the strange women, right? And Jezebel is a strange woman. And so when your husband is spiritually married to the spirit of Jezebel yep. and you say anything, he is going to accuse you of being Jezebel because nobody wants to be called that. No woman wants to be called that. And so that spirit that he's married to has manipulated his mind and his tongue and label you with that 
to cause you to shut up because you see what he's doing. Yeah. You know what he's up to. Yeah. And so he calls you that instead. Yeah. But his wicked spiritual wife, Jezebel, is whispering sweet nothings into his ear. I'm going to get you what you want, baby. Don't That's worry right. about it. That's right. I'm going to get you that, that new Bentley. I'm going to get you that new this. I'm going to get you that other man's wife. I'm going to get you whatever. I'm going to get yep. you all the things you want, Ahab. So the spirit of Ahab has also risen up in a lot of men, and that spirit of Jezebel is married to these men. That's right. You hear that? So that spirit of Jezebel is riding these men. She's married to them. They they they, they toting around this spirit like it's like it's a garment. <laughs> yes. They're wearing the spirit like it's a garment. Mm -hmm. Now look at this scripture here. This is a doozy of the scripture. This is Proverbs chapter eleven. Proverbs chapter eleven. And I can read this one. This is Proverbs chapter eleven. Uh someone give me a Jim, give me a cold water. I don't know if there's any left, so you might have to share no. this one. I like what <laughs> um, E. Judah said here. The spirit targets those filled with the spirit of Elijah, and that is correct. There are a lot of people who the Most High is spit, uh, filling with the spirit of Elijah. And so those with the spirit of Ahab attacks those with the spirit of Elijah. That's right. You hear that? Wow. <clears throat> That's wise because... You see the same thing happened there is playing out now, right? Yes. Wow, that's spiritual. Mm. This is Proverbs chapter eleven, verse twenty two. Now watch this scripture. When I saw the scripture, it made so much sense. <coughs> eleven verse twenty two. And this is what it says. A Jew of gold in a swine snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. Wow. So she can be a beautiful woman, right? But if she don't have discretion, she's just like a jewel of gold in a pig's nose. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Disgusting. Wow, did you hear that? Mm. She's just like a jewel of gold in a pig's nose. You can be as beautiful as you want to be, right? But if you don't have this discernment, discretion, right? I'm going to show you, right? This is in the scriptures. Boy, I got some scriptures. Now watch this here. Woo wee, I got some doozy. I got them coming for you. Woo Hallelujah. I got them coming for you, right? Now watch this. Job's wife. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Job's wife? Yes. Watch this. Yes. This is Job chapter 2, verse 9. The boy, you read that. Okay, Job chapter 2, verse 9 reads as follow. follows. Then said his woman unto him, Do you still retain your integrity? Bless Elohim and die. It says bless them? Yeah. yeah. I think they got that wrong because yeah, it says curse. Um, in the, yeah, in the, the, uh, the King James it says curse your God and die. Yeah, curse You him see and how die. these, uh, we got to definitely look at these yeah. translations. There's something else. But this one says bless Elohim and die. And we know he, she didn't say it because read the next verse. What did he say to her? But us? he said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Well, what? So, so why would it be blessed then? You mm -hmm. get it? Because why would he respond like that? If he said, if she said something righteous, he'd be like, well, well you're right, woman. <laughs> you know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, what did he say again? He said, you speak like a foolish woman. Why would he say you speak like a foolish woman if he said bless Elo if she said bless Elohim? That's right. You know, but what? Shall we receive good of the hand of Elohim and shall we not receive evil? And wow. all this did not Job sin with his lips. That's right. So she was telling him to curse him, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you look at this right, this was his wife. So she's looking at him suffering, going through all this pain, losing his children, losing all this. And she was probably in mourning too and upset and just, <coughs> but her way of dealing with it was curse Yahuwah and die. Just going mm -hmm. to curse him and die. He said, you speak like a foolish woman. Wow, wait a minute. Foolish woman? What did it say about the beautiful woman, right? It said, it, it said that when she, when she don't have discretion, right? Or wisdom or discernment. That's the opposite of a fool, mm -hmm. right? A foolish woman, a foolish person, right? Mm -hmm. Remember what I just said, foolish, right? Mm -hmm. um, Benita brought out a good point. I've heard this before that the etymology of the word bless is cursed. Wow. And that that's something? why we need to use barakah. <laughs> wow, know? isn't that something? So the English language is loaded with all kinds wow, isn't of that something? out things. 
that is a very good point that was brought that out is, there. That's an excellent point. Thank yes. you. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So now, wow. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. something to think about. Yes. So now when you look at this whole thing, right, now, we have seen some examples of wicked women. Now, let's look at some examples of some righteous women. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Aquila and Priscilla. Let's go to them. This is Acts. Let's read Acts chapter 18. Let's read that entire chapter. Sophia <clears throat> and Rebecca, I will let you all split that up. The full chapter of um, 18, Acts 18. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> and after this, Shaul left Athenai and went to Corinthos, and he found a certain Euclid named Aquilus, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy from his wife Priscilla because Claudius had commanded all the Yehudim to leave Rome and he came to them and because he was of the same trade he stayed with them and was working for they were tent makers by trade and we and when and he was reasoning in the congregation of every Shabbat and won over both Yehudim and Yahawanites. And when Scylla and Timotheos came down from Macedonia, Shaua was pressed by the Ruach and earnestly witnessed to the Yehuda that Yahuwah is Hamashiach. However, when they resisted and blasphemed, he, took his, he shook his garments and said to them, your blood is upon your head, I am clean, for now on I shall go to the Gentiles. And having left there, he came to the house of a certain man named Yastos, Eustos, who worshipped him, Elohim, whose house was next to the congregation, and Crispus, the ruler of the congregation, believed in the Adon with all his household, and many Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were immersed. And the Adon spoke to Shaul in the night by a vision, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not be silent, because I am with you, and no one shall attack you to do evil, because I have much people in the city. And he remained a year and six months, teaching the word of Yahuwah among them. And when Galeon was precounsel of Achaia and the Yehudim with one mind rose up against Shaul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This one seduces men to worship Elohim contrary to Torah. And as Shaul was about to open his mouth, Galeon said to the Yehudim, If it were a matter of wrongdoing, a matter of wrongdoing, a matter of wrongdoing, or wicked recklessness, or Yehuda, there would be a reason why there would be reason why I should bear with you. <coughs> but if it is a question of words and names and a law which is among you, see it yourselves, for I do not want to be a judge of you. And he drove them away from the judgment seat, and all the Yahwanites took Sosthenes the ruler of the congregation and beat him before the judgment seat. But Galleon showed no concern whatever. And Shaul, having stayed several days more, having taken leave of the brothers, was sailing for Syria, and Pris Priscilla and Aquila's. <coughs> That's Priscilla and Aquila. Mm -hmm. Priscilla and Aquila were with him having shaved his hair at Cancria, where he had taken a vow. Okay, let me say something real quickly here before we keep going. So basically, we see how these were some educated men, and they were all 
um, educated men and women because Aquila and Priscilla both was with Paul. Are you hearing this? They were both with Paul. And you know Paul was educated, right? And very smart as it relates to the scriptures, right? Now keep going. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself went into the con congregation and reasoned with the Yehudim. And when they asked him to stay longer time with them, he declined, but took leave of them, saying, I have to keep this coming festival in Jerusalem by all means, but I shall come back to you, Elohim desire itself. And he sailed from Ephesus, and having come to Caesarea, going up and greeting the assembly, he went down to Antiochia. And having spent some time there, he went forth, passing through the country of Galatea, and on through Phrygia, strengthening all the Talmudim. And a certain Yehudi named Apollos, born of Alexandria, at Alexandria, a learned man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Okay, now, pay attention now. So now, after they doing this journey in and going around back and forth. Paul was with Priscilla and Aquila, right? Now, pay attention here. This certain man, Apollos, born at Alexandria, was an eloquent man, right? Who was mighty in scripture. He was very wise and understanding, and he was mighty in scriptures. Pay attention. Now, keep reading. This one had been instructed in the way of the Adam, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching that about the Adon exactly, though he knew only the emergence of Jonathan. Okay, now pay attention. So, this man, talking about Apollos, was instructed in the way of Yahuwah, being fervent in spirit. And he spake and taught diligently the things of Yahuwah, knowing only the baptism of John. Mm -hmm. Wow, pay attention. So we ain't talking about a dummy here. This man was very smart, right? Mm -hmm. Very smart and educated and was in the way of Yahuwah knowing all this stuff, right? Now keep going. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the congregation. And when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of Elohim more exactly. <laughs> and when he intended to pass through Achaia, the brothers having encouraged him, wrote to the Talmudian to receive him, who, having arrived, greatly helped those who believed through faith. But with power, he refuted the Yahudim publicly, showing from scriptures that Yahushua is Mashiach. Okay. Now, pay attention here. So, even though this man was smart and wise and sitting up in the congregation teaching everything, Priscilla and Aquila saw that he was off on a couple of points. Right? Because they knew he only knew John's baptism. Yes. So they said, Apollos, we want to talk to you. We're going to show you a more excellent way. We're going to show you a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. Wow. You mean to tell me as, as wise and as smart as this man was, Priscilla and Aquila was wise enough to be able to pull him aside and show him a more excellent way? They literally corrected the man. And he was a bold speaking man in the temple that was called of Yahuwah. And they pulled him aside and corrected him. A husband and a wife. Woo! Now, this man, <laughs> this man didn't say that, listen, I'm only going to listen to um, Aquila. I don't want to hear from you, Priscilla. He didn't, he exactly. didn't go through all of that. He didn't go through all that. Because our people understood things back then differently yes. than the way it's being pushed today. That's right. They understood things. And so Priscilla and Aquila both set him down and showed him a more excellent way. And there was no problem or issue with it, period. Wow. Did you hear this? Mm -hmm. You hear this? But see, that's how it was. Look at look at um, the board of judge. She corrected many brethren. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she did correct it all Israel, mm -hmm. right? She judged all Israel. So now you got to look at this couple, though. This is a husband and wife team mm -hmm. that's in the scriptures going together, evangelizing together, going out with Paul even, mm -hmm. right? Together and teaching people. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at this here scripture. This is Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Um, Deborah, you can read that one. Then I'll go to the Corinthians one. Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Romans chapter 16, verse 3 reads as follows. <clears throat> Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers, in Yahusha Hamashiach. <laughs> He's Paul said, these are my helpers in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Wow, in teaching the truth, should I say. Mm -hmm. These are my helpers in dealing with the truth and reaching Israel. Wow. You I, see that? I have another one, too. Go ahead. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't even say whether or not these women were married. Ain't that something? Well, this is coming from Paul too. And um And so we this is amazing because when you look at these this two this married couple and how they were evangelizing, going out in this using using Yah's word, bringing correction mm -hmm. to people, mm -hmm. right? In the scriptures. Mhm. Mm now, this message is meant uh, for the daughters of Zion to take heed as well. Yes. Because <clears throat> the Most High, he says, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my Ruach HaKadosh on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, which is speak under the divine inspiration of the Most High Yah. And so um, in Philippians uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 3, um, as a matter of fact, let me just go a couple of verses before that so you can get the full understanding. It says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in Yah, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodias and I beseech Sintich that they be of the same mind in Yah. And I also entreat thee, true yoke fellow, Help those women which labor with me in the gospel. Wow. And Clement this? also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. These women, it didn't say whether or not they were married or not. It said, but it, it says, and treat them too. They're fellow laborers in the gospel with me. That's right. Yep. He said, with me. <clears throat> they labor with me in the gospel. So. Um, the Most High is doing a work in these last days. Yes, okay? he is. And right now he is trying to shut the noise of those who are speaking and pushing false doctrines and causing women to err. They themselves are erring. And this is why we talk, we're making this comparison between a righteous and an unrighteous uh, wife or woman, period. Because a lot of women, even if you're not married and you're listening to false doctrines and and you're sitting up under these men and you know that they are not instructing you in righteousness, but for some reason you can't let go, you have you got to understand that the Most High is requiring you to make a choice. <clears throat> Just like Sapphira was presented with a choice. When, when, when Peter stepped to her yep. and he asked her, it was right then and there that she had a choice to make. So it was almost like he said, okay, you conspired with your husband to do this. Right. But here's your chance right now to redeem yourself. Right. Did you not know, <clears throat> or do you know, or can you tell me <clears throat> how much did the land sa sell for? Mm -hmm. And when she foolishly agreed with the lie that her and her husband conspired with together, she fell dead. She fell dead. So whether you're married or <clears throat> single, the Most High is saying, choose ye this day whom you will serve, Yah or man. Yes. If your pastor... Your leader, your bishop, whatever they call themselves, is leading you astray. You better flee because then you will be likened to Sapphira if you sit up under that kind of wickedness. Yep. When that judgment comes down, it's gonna say, it's gonna mow you down too. I want you to pay attention to this, right? Because this is so clear. This next couple of scriptures I'm gonna give you. These, these are a doozy. Okay, let's go to this next one. This is about Priscilla and Aquila again. This is First Corinthians. I can read this one. Okay. First Corinthians chapter sixteen, <laughs> verse nineteen. It says, "The churches of Asia salute you, Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in Yahuwah with the church that is in their house, the assembly that is in their house." So they taught out of their home. 
Priscilla and Aquila. It didn't say Aquila, right? Only. It said Priscilla and Aquila in the assembly that they taught out of their home. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there it is. Now, yes. this next example is a clear example to you women. Mm -hmm. That if you have a husband that ain't righteous, that don't have good spiritual discernment, it's going to show you how you supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I told you I had one for you, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I told you I had one for you. Didn't I tell you that? I got a scripture. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Let's do it. Chapter 25. <clears throat> now this is a doozy of a scripture. This is going to tell you women how you supposed to be. 1 Samuel chapter 25 and we're going to start at verse 1 you can start at verse 1 Sophia I'm going to have you uh, read verses 1 through 15 Rebecca you're going to read 16 through 24 and I'll take it from there okay <clears throat> pay attention and Shemuel died you all speak up because even with the mic, they were saying they could barely hear you. Some were saying that. Is it turned up all the way to mic? Make sure this left when it's, yeah, that one has turned up all the way. Okay, go ahead. Okay. And Shemuel died, and all Israel gathered and mourned for him, and buried him at his home in Ramah. And Dawid arose and went down into the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Ma'an, and his work was in Carmel, and the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he came to be shearing his sheep in Carmel, and the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and good looking, but the man was hard and evil in his doings, and he was of Caleb. And uh, hold, hold, so hold on now. Pay attention. <laughs> oh, pay I told you I had one for you, right? Now, it says here his name was Nabal, right? And the name of his wife was Abigail. So this is Nabal and Abigail now, right? Mm -hmm. And she was a woman of good understanding. And she was also beautiful. Now, remember what, what we said about the nose, the, the snout, the nose. It says a, a woman can have beauty, right? But if she don't have good understanding, right, then it's no different than a, a diamond in a pig's nose. Diamond in a pig's nose. So she wasn't like a diamond in a pig's nose. She was like a diamond on a on a, on a beautiful woman, right? Mm -hmm. So pay attention. And so she was of good understanding, but her husband was what? What did it say, Sophia? Her husband, first three was hard and evil in his doings. He was hard and evil of his doings. And he was of the seed of, he was of the house of Caleb. Right? Wow, now pay attention. Keep going. And Dawid heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. And Dawid sent ten young men. And Dawid said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, and you shall come to Nabal and greet him in my name. And say this, Long life and peace to you, and peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. And now I have heard that you have shearers. Now your shepherds have been with us. We did not put them to shame, and the respect of theirs was missing all the days they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and let them inform you. So let the young men find favor in your eyes. For we come on a good day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son Dawid. And the young men of David came and spoke to Nabal according to these words in the name of Dawid. Okay, now let me stop right there real quick. Okay, so basically David um, and, his, and his men were all in the same area when Nabal's men, his servants and stuff, were shearing the sheep and, 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 and stuff. And so David's men literally was like protection for them. Okay, and so David is like, David's like, hey, we were good to y'all, y'all men when your men was down here around us, and they were shearing their sheep. We were good to them. Did nothing happen to them, and 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 not one of them got hurt by us, right? 
And so David's like, so now return a, a good favor to us now, Nabal. Return to any kind of food or anything you can. Send it to us because David's men was needing. They were in needing of some things, right? So watch this. Keep going now. Verse, where are we at? Verse 10. Yeah. But Nabal answered the servants of Dawid and said, Who is Dawid? And who is the son of Yeshai? The servants who are running away from their masters have become many nowadays. And now shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have slaughtered for my shears and give to the men coming from who knows where? And the young men of Dawid turned around on their way and went back and came and reported to him all these words. Okay, now. You see how wicked Nabal is? You see him? He said, who is David? Who is Dawid? You know, he knew who David was. <laughs> All that region knew who David was. But he was arrogant. I got my thousands of sheep. I got my thousands of goats. And I'm doing this, doing this. I own all of this. Who is Dawid? Who is he? Right? Pay attention. So he said, I'm not going to give him my food. and my, my No, I'm not giving him nothing. Now that question was more like who does he think he is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now pay attention. Keep going. And Dawid said to his men, each one girded on his sword. So they each girded on his sword, and Dawid also girded on his sword. And about four hundred men went with Dawid, and two hundred remained with the baggage. And one of the young men informed Abigail, the wife of Nabal, saying, See, Dawid sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, but he scoffed at them. But the men were very good to us and did not put us to shame, nor did we miss anything all the days we accompanied them when we were in the fields. Okay, now, so basically, you see what's going on here. David's mad now. David's upset. <laughs> David like, get some swords. Let's get on our horses. We're going to pay this dude in the bow a visit. <laughs> We're going to go deal with him now, right? We're going to take what he, we're going to take it now. Now, pay attention. This story is deep, I'm telling you. Now, who's next? Rebecca. Rebecca. Go ahead and start reading. Now, where did you leave off at? 14. 15. They were a wall to us, both by night and day, all the days we were with them tending the sheep. And now know and see what you should do, for evil hath been resolved against our master, and against all his household, and he is too much of a son of Belial, which Belial, is wickedness, yeah, son of wickedness, to speak to. That a man, that a man cannot speak to him. Go ahead. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep made ready, five seam of roasted grain and one hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, Pass over before me. See, I am coming after you. But she did not inform her husband. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm. Wait a minute. Are you hearing this? So they told Abigail, right? Mm -hmm. They told Abigail. They said, oh, man, David and the servants, they coming down with swords. and They're going to they gonna slay your husband. They're going to slay. They're going to get all of y'all. So Abigail was like, whoa, 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 whoa. She said, G get some food. Get, 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 uh, Gather up some stuff. <laughs> get, <laughs> get some wine. Get some raisins. Get, get, get cakes. Get figs. Get, figs, get meat. Get, get, get all of this. Get all of this stuff quickly. And she said, I'm not telling my husband nothing. Whoa. Are you hearing this? I'm not telling him nothing. I'm covering this dude up. <laughs> I'm covering him because he's too stupid and foolish. Wow. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's too stupid and foolish. I got to cover him up. Now, wait a minute. Watch this. I told you I had one for you now. Watch this. Keep going now. Watch it. And it came to be as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill. And there were Dawi and his men coming down toward her, and she met them. And Dawi had said, Only in vain have I prote protected all that this one has in the wilderness. Okay, hold. So David said, We protected all his men like this, uh, his, his shears and all of this. He said, We did all that in vain. 
So David is upset. Go ahead. So that not a speck was missing of all that belongs to him. And he has repaid me evil for good. Let Elohim do so, and more also to the enemies of Dawid, if I leave one bell of all who belong to him by morning light. So David said, let so be done to, 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 woo, David is upset. He said, if I leave one man alive of Nabal's men, if I leave one man alive, let so happen to me. Wow, so David is upset. Yes. Now, keep going. And Abigail saw Dawi, and she hastened to come down from the donkey, and fell on her face before Dawi, and bowed down to the ground, and fell at his feet, and said, On me, my master, let this wickedness be on me. And please let your female servant speak in your ears, and hear the words of your female servant. Please let not my master regard this man of Belial, Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't think you got that, right? <laughs> she said his name is the same as what he is doing. He's a fool. And she said, because I looked it up, his name means fool. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Woo! Are you hearing that? His name means fool. And so she said that she said, just like his name means, that's what he is. And she and this is her, her his her, his wife, right? His wife said, Let this charge be on me. So she's doing this to save his behind from getting killed, right? Because David was surely gonna kill him, right? And so here this woman, she's sitting there, she's saying to herself, she said, she said, Look here, let it fall on me. My husband is a fool, just like his name says. That's what my husband is. Now keep on reading. Read that verse again. Please let not my master regard this man of Belial, Nabal. For his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your female servant, did not see the young men of my master whom you sent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, I'm going to pick up the reading. <laughs> I wanted to make a point that um, in today's time, you have um, women, regardless of what their husband is doing, they're going to support him in that foolishness and folly. But this woman, even though she was willing to lay down her life for him, she wasn't willing to lie for him. That's she wasn't right. willing to That's right. uh, excuse <clears throat> his deeds That's right. or his doings. She said, Look, he's stupid. He's doing stuff that he ain't got no business doing. Um, I see it. Can you spare him? Um, just let it be on me. Not wow. one time did she try to justify anything. Nope. You see, that's the difference. You have women today. They know their husband <laughs> doing wicked stuff. Yeah, they, they know, know it. They know he is. And using the scripture to do it. And they will support that man. But this woman, she was righteous. And she had understanding. That's what it said about her. She had great understanding. <clears throat> and her understanding was that these men were coming to kill her man. So not only did she go and greet him, she had stuff with her. She grabbed um, raisins and figs and cakes and all this stuff and grain because she knew <laughs> what her husband was doing was wicked. And so that is a message to women today. Right. Whether you are a pastor's wife in the Christian church or Listen. you are a pastor's wife in the Hebrew assemblies or whatever you are. If your man is doing wicked, you have a mandate that's to right. uphold righteousness. Righteousness, not that's uphold right. uphold your man. <laughs> Because if you choose to uphold that man in his wickedness, judgment is going to come on you too. That's right. So you got to part ways with that wickedness. You got to part ways with it. Wow. Verse 26. Wow. <clears throat> now, therefore, my master, as Yahuwah lives and as your soul lives, seeing Yahuwah has withheld you from coming to shed blood and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now let your enemies and they that seek evil to my master be as Nabal. And now this blessing which your handmaid has brought unto my master, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my master. I pray you, forgive the transgression of your handmaid, for Yahuwah will certainly make my master a sure house, because my master fights the battles of Yahuwah, and evil has not been found in you all your days. Yet a man is risen to pursue you, 
and to seek your soul, but the soul of my master shall be bound in the bundle of life with Yahuwah Elohika. And the souls of your enemies, them shall be sl shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when Yahuwah shall have done to my master according according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you, and shall have appointed you ruler over Yashrael, that this shall be no grief unto you, nor offense of heart unto my master, either that you have shed blood causeless, or that my master have avenged himself. But when Yahuwah shall have dealt well with my master, then remember your handmaid. So she said basically, when you come into your kingdom and you and the most high deal with you, they deal with you and bless you, bring these blessings on you, and when the most high deal with my husband, mm -hmm. okay, she said, Remember me, don't forget me. Mm -hmm. Wow, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, pay attention. I'm telling you this is deep. So I'm gonna read this part here. Mm -hmm. It says, And David said to Abigail, Blessed be Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. Blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou which have kept me this day for coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand, for in for in very deed as Yahuwah Elohim of Israel liveth, which have kept me back from hurting thee, excepting thou hast Except thou hast hastened and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that piss up against the wall. So David said, surely if you hadn't came and stopped me, woman, <laughs> it wouldn't have been none of Nabal's men left. And so David received her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her, go in peace to thy house. And see, I have hearkened to your voice and accept and accepted thy person. Right? <clears throat> and Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held his feast in his house. He held a feast, feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry with within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. So she kept it from him. She said, I'm not going to tell him nothing that happened. Not not now because he drunk with wine. I'm going to let you finish. Where did you leave off? Verse um, 37 is where you should start. Okay. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of navel and his woman had told him these things that his heart died within him. And he became as a stone. And it, and it came to pass about ten days after that Yahuwah smote Nabal that he died. Whoa, wait a minute. So David didn't have to smote him. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yah did it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And guess what? Because, a, because Abigail didn't follow her hubby down this road, she was spared. And not only was she spared, she was blessed. Keep reading. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be Yahuwah, or Barakah be Yahuwah, that <laughs> has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept his servant from evil. For Yahuwah has returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. Wow! So David, David said, it just kept me from doing evil because they was about to go do some evil, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Yah said, that's okay. I got, I got you, David. Just chill. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Yah let Nabal's wickedness come upon his own on head. his own head. Wow. And David sent and comm communed with Abigail to take her to, to him to be his wife. Wow. <laughs> to be his woman. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let your handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my master. Wow, isn't that something? So basically, she got blessed. Mm 
She got blessed in this whole thing. She didn't go down the road of her husband. She even did something to save this uh, her husband from David's wrath, right? But Yah's wrath got him. <laughs> yeah. Woo! The Are you hearing this? In. <laughs> most have moved in. So you women out there that are married, right? You better cover your head. You better cover that man up. Yeah. Now they keep on those men keep on telling you you got to wear this or you can't even come into the assembly. Yeah. Okay, that's fine if they want you to wear your head cover, but you need to understand what it means to cover your head because this ain't it. That's right. This ain't it. That's being caught <clears throat> in error. It means cover that man's authority when you dealing with Yah. That's when right. When you pray or when you prophesy, yeah, you better cover that man's head. And in these cases, or his authority, and in these cases, it wasn't an issue of praying or prophesying. It was a man who was a wicked man. That's and right. these wives knew they were wicked. Yep. And Abigail, she said, look, I know my husband is messed up. I know he's gone. And so, look, look, I'm not going to try to justify it. I know he's a foolish man. But can you have mercy, right? So this woman knew her husband was evil, and she wasn't even trying to justify it. And so yeah. don't be one of those who will sit and do that um, Bonnie and Clyde thing or that ride or die thing with your husband. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Mm -mm. Because judgment will pursue you as well. Wow. So now we're going to go to that scripture with because about the head covering, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I want you to see this, right? Because there's something in this that you women need to see. Mm -hmm. Okay? Something you need to see. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read 1 through 10. Now, I want you to pay attention because this scripture, I'm telling you, these husbands don't want you to really understand this scripture because they feel strength in keeping their foot on the wife's neck. Mm -hmm. To them, that's power. As long as I keep that woman in order, keep her in order and all this. Let me tell you something. You women better get your eyes open and listen to this scripture because there's power in it, right? Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 1. Start at verse 1 through 10. Where are we again? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. <clears throat> verse 1 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 1 through 10. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Hamashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Hamashiach, mm -hmm. and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Hamashiach is Yahuwah. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. Not every woman who prays or prophesies with an uncovered head disgraces the head itself. But it is a disgrace for those who are shaven. For if the woman is sheared, yet wholly covered, such women are not obscene when wholly covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of Elohim. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of woman, but the woman of man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power over her head because of the angels. Now, I want you to pay attention to this, right? Listen carefully. <clears throat> this passage, it starts out and he lets you know what the head is of the woman and who the head is of the man. And it tells the man, man, when you pray and prophesy, you can't cover your head because your head is Mashiach. Okay, so you don't cover your head when you pray and prophesy. Don't cover the Mashiach when you pray and prophesy, right? Okay, but to the woman, he said, you got to cover your head. Who is your head? It's the man. So she got to cover her head, which is the man. She got to cover him when she's seeking Yah, when she's going to Yah. She got to cover him up completely. Now watch this, right? Verse 10, it says, for this cause ought the woman have power on her head. Who is her head? The man. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing this? Power on her head, which is the man. Why? It says because of the angels. Now, I'm going to tell you what that means so you get an understanding. You see, 
Abigail said, I'm covering this man. And because of that, she had power over him to the point where the angel said, okay, we making a judgment now. Nabal, you gone. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, understand what I'm saying to you here, right? We know that um, Sarah was a very righteous woman, right? Mm -hmm. And Sarah was so righteous and she obeyed Abraham. Scripture tells you that Sarah obeyed Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. She obeyed Abraham. But watch this. When we go to Genesis chapter 16, right? See, Abraham knew what was going on. Genesis chapter 16. I'm going to read this to you. This is verse 5. Okay. You know the story when Hagar, um, she kind of um, acted a, 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 a way towards Sarah. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read verse, starting at verse 1. It says, Now Sarah, Abr Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now, Yahuwah have restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into, uh, go in into my maid, and it may be that thou may obtain a ch children by her. And Abram hearkened unto the voice of Sarah. Okay, pay attention. Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, right? And he went in and took Hagar the maid and had a child with her. And Sarah, Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her handmaid, the Egyptian, and Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. Okay? And he went in into Hagar and conceived. And she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress despised. Her mistress was despised in her eyes. Mm -hmm. mm. So, now, the next verse. And Sarah said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon you, Abraham. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Now, Yah judged between me and thee. Now, when she said, Yah judged between me and thee, Abraham knew better because Abraham said, Oh, man, if I hadn't have taken this woman to, can, to have a child with her, then there would be no grounds for judgment upon me. But because I did this thing, I got to back down. This woman got power right now. I got to back down. She has power over her head. <laughs> over her head. Are you hearing me? <laughs> she got power over Abraham now. And Abraham knew it. That's why Abraham said this. He said, in the next verse, it says, But Abraham said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hands. Do to her as whatever pleases thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. So Sarah said, okay, I, okay, so I can, I can do whatever, right? And Abraham said, she obeyed, go ahead. I don't, don't, y'all don't have to judge between me and you. You don't have to do it. I'm stepping aside. I'm stepping aside. I'm getting out the way. Wow. <laughs> wow. Are you hearing this? Can you imagine in today's time, uh, some of these Israelite men that has a daughter of Zion that they're married to and they have a foreign woman that they're married to. Can you imagine if wives today said, put that bond woman out of here? Woo! <laughs> Can you imagine that? Wow. For Can those, you imagine that? For those who practice polygamy, polygyny, whatever they want to call it. Can you imagine if the wife that is a daughter of Zion said, put that bond woman wow. out, would these men do it? No. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> see, and see, some of you men out there don't understand. This woman to have power over you, right? I'll prove it to you. I got a scripture. <laughs> I got another scripture for you. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3 and watch this. So we bringing y'all scripture. We we ain't trying to get no husbands and wives to uh, be bucking against each other or wives bucking against husbands. Right. We're trying to bring you clarity to some things that uh, That's have right. been just kind of glossed over or taught in error. Thus having women cowering down, not understanding that they have 
the power of the Ruach HaKadosh mm -hmm. working in them as well. Because in this last yes. day, the Most High needs all of his soldiers out here. Okay? He says, in the last days, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to pour out my Ruach HaKadosh on all flesh. That's right. My sons and my daughters, That's your right. sons and your daughters, shall speak under the divine inspiration of the Most High Yah. That's right. Prophesy. That's what That's it right. Means. That's what it says. Now, I'm going to tell you something, right? We're trying to bring order. This is order. Yah wants order because he's tired of what these prayers of these women are going up and they're praying because they're afraid and they don't know how to deal with things. They don't know how to bring that man to judgment before Yah. And so they're praying and crying to Yah, crying to Yah. And Yah said, teach them. I want you, I want these women to understand they have power. Yes. It's power, right? Yes. And watch this. You got men out here telling women that they can't pray to Yah themselves, that they got to come through that man. You better cover him up. You better like cover you that said, man up. They cover him up and you get through to Yah yourself. That's right. Because Yah has a way of straightening folk out, including yes. husbands and including yes. wives. He's, it goes both ways. Hey, didn't he straighten out Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> Oh. Then y'all straightened him out. Oh, he he straightened him out. him out. He, he laid, laid him out, didn't he, right? Yes. Yeah. Now watch this, right? This is um, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Read verse 28. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Yahudi nor Yavani. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Yahusha HaMashiach. Now what does it tell us that there's neither male or female? It's talking about when you're in Yahushua HaMashiach, you're in him, you're in the spirit. When you're moving in the spirit, mm -hmm. you have the authority of the spirit. So that trumps, mm -hmm. right, whether you are female or not. That woman can command spirits just like a man can. She can bring judgment just like a man could. That's why Sarah said, she looked at you, she said, made the most high judge between me and you. And Abraham said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Because she understood her thing. She covered that man up. Mm -hmm. You see? And that's why the scripture says that's why a woman can have power over her head. Because she done covered him up. And now the angels are there ready to bring judgment. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Because there is a righteous order of Yah. That's he right. trying to establish that in this last day. That's right. The man is the head, but when a woman prays or prophesies, she's got to cover that head. Now, I've noticed a number of, a couple of people keep asking. Uh, we did a lesson where we talked about this in length, what it means to cover your head. But I'm going to briefly mention it again. Listen. Uh, covering your head again a lot of people teach that it's covering this head but your husband is your head and when you cover his authority um, as it pertains to praying and prophesying I'm not talking about dealing with Yah basically when it, yeah. when it deals with Yah you can't cover his authority when he's uh, the ruler of his house that's right your husband tell you to do something including if he wants you to wear your head covered so be it but that's it has right. nothing to do with the passage that talks about head covering when you cover your husband or cover your head, it's saying cover his authority when Yah is dealing with you. Right, because so, Yah, that's right, because yeah, Yah can yeah. tell you something, woman. Yes, yes. He can tell you to do something, and that man's authority would be that, no, you ain't going to do this. But Yah telling you to do it? Mm -hmm. Yah will deal with that man. And we shared a very sad yes. example, and I'm just going to briefly mention it again, because I know we get a lot of newcomers every week praise Yah, hallelujah mm -hmm. but for you newcomers i want to give you a good example of what it what will happen if the daughters of zion um go to yah in prayer about something that their husbands are doing this is a sad example and i'm going to keep it very quick and brief listen but there was a situation this was in detroit where um a man um well, I'm not sure if it was in Detroit, but uh, this this happened some time ago, and it was a, we lived in in Michigan when we heard of the story. But um, there was a, a man who came home late, and he got into it with his wife. It was already after eleven when he came home from work, yeah. and he wanted to go back out. And she cried, and she was like, "Baby, can you please not go out? Can you just yeah. stay home? I'd rather for you stay home." Because he wants to go hang out at some clubs or do whatever. She was begging and pleading with him to stay home. They got into it. Okay? When they got into it, he left. She gets a knock on her door hours later in the wee hours of the morning, three or four in the morning. And it was an officer informing her that her husband was in a car crash and he was killed. Okay? Now, yeah. 
this woman was crying because she didn't want him to leave. No doubt she probably thought he was up to something, okay? And you all know what I mean by that, leaving to go hang out in the wee hours of the night and you're a married man. And so in that case, it was like the angel of death followed him when he left out that door. Yep. And so when the daughters of Zion pray and they ask Yah to intervene, sometimes the Most High, if he, if he knows the man's heart that he's not going to repent, he can intervene in that way. In other cases, he can do other things. That's right. Uh, someone put the example of Diary of a Mad, a mad Black Woman in here as an example. And if, if you all remember that story correctly, um, he was out here doing something with another woman. As a matter of fact, it was a non-black woman. Even mm -hmm. if she had some stuff mixed in her, she was a non-black woman. And this husband was blatant and bold with it. But when he got messed up and was on his deathbed, who took care of him? Yeah. When that other woman was ready to pull the plug, his wife took care of him. Yeah. And so... You have to understand, family, that we need to understand the power of Yah that is within all of us, our yeah. brothers and our sisters. If you have a wife yeah. that's cutting up, you need to get on your knees and pray about it because Yah will deal with her. He will deal with Vice her. Vice versa. A man, vice versa, yeah. Yep, a husband that's cutting up, Yah will deal with him. As long as you are righteous when you go before him, Yah is a righteous judge. Yeah. And this is why if a husband or a wife says, may the most high judge between me and you, who? That is a very powerful statement, yeah. not just between husband and wife, but individuals, period. If anyone is dealing with you unrighteously and you take that thing before the Most High Yah, you have activated his judgment in yep. one direction or the other. You have Either he's going to get you for coming yep. to him falsely or wrongly, or he's going to get that person. That's right. Wow, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. And so, women, you got to learn how to cover your man up. Cover him up. That means when you're dealing with Yah, if Yah tells you, if you're seeking Yah spiritually, and Yah's revealing things to you and showing you this and showing you that, and your husband decides, uh, no, I, I'm not doing none of that. I, I, I'm, I'm against all of that. And he want to do his own thing, you better cover him up. other words, say, well, Father Yah, I'm going to do what you told me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to seek the way you told me to seek. I'm going to pray and listen to you, Father Yah. And if my husband continues to go, my husband not now he's talking about if he wanna he wanna believe he believes in Buddha. I don't believe in Buddha. And so Father Yah, I'm gonna keep seeking you and I'm gonna keep coming and he can come and say, Look, I'm the head of this house. You gonna start reading this Buddha book with me, you know? <laughs> And she'd be like, I'm not reading that Buddha book, you know? Whatever. She better get she better stand up and say, Look here, I'm gonna do what Yah told me to do. I'm covering you up now. Because now you you speaking foolishly. That cover means literally ignore. Yeah. You know, when I'm praying to Yah and when I'm prophesying, um, I have to ignore his authority. That's what that cover means. Yeah. Because Yah's authority trumps in that situation. That's right. You see. That's why I said, that's why I said she had power over the head. She got power over her own head when she covers him up. She has power now. And so you women got to understand, you got power. Now, you got power. <laughs> now, spiritual warrior of Yah in Christ, he says, let women pray good for the man and not just when he is, a is when she is angry at him. We agree with that 100%. Yeah, of course. As a matter of fact, the scripture even <clears throat> mandates that the daughters of Zion pray for the men. It says, right. call for the morning women. So this lesson, we're, we're trying to bring out a certain point here in this lesson, but we've talked before about how the daughters of Zion are to wail and moan for our men. And especially within your household, um, I pray for my husband all the time. Yeah. And my husband prays for me. Within your household, it is an absolute must that we pray for one another. You pray for your children. You pray for um, your family, your friends. So, yeah, that, that goes without saying, brother, yeah. that we don't, it's not, we're not telling women to just go to Yah when their husband is cutting up and you saying, get them. No, that's not. No, that ain't what we're saying. <laughs> Pay attention to what we're saying. Yeah. We're saying this here, right? And understand this, right? Okay. Let's say there's a wife and she has a husband that she loves. She loves this man. But this man is just going astray. Mm -hmm. He's just going astray. And she's like, man, I don't, I don't want him to go astray, Father Yah. I love him, you know. So, Father Yah, she needs to cover him up because he's going astray. And say, Father Yah, I need you to deal with this man and bring him in the righteous path. Okay? But. If there is a situation where this man is doing her blatantly wrong, that means he's doing something so bad to where this woman is now to the point where she's saying, okay, Father Yah, 
this thing got beyond because I'm gonna tell you why she got to be this way. Pay attention. Let's say that this man decides that I want me another wife, right? And he's not a bishop or nothing like that, or, 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 or overseer. And he says, "Well, I won't be another wife, right?" And that woman say, "Okay, but why do you want another wife?" Mm -hmm. And he says, "Well, I just want one, right? So I'm gonna just go and just go out and get the picking, right? Pay attention. He's not doing things right. He's just going out picking any kind of woman. He picking somebody because he heard something through the grapevine that she was a trip in bed, right? So then now." He done went out here, he done got among a woman, and he don't know what's going on with that woman. Mm -hmm. Because his hormones are just thriving, and he feel like, I got to get me another wife. And so he just went out here, and he didn't get any kind of woman and brought her up in the house now, right? Not knowing if she got diseases, demons, or who knows what. Mm -hmm. So now, that woman got to say, wait a minute. I got to, I got this, now, yeah, I need you to judge between me and him. Because now he's not doing this thing righteously. He's coming at me with this stuff. And he's forcing this thing on me. And so now yeah, I need you to judge between me and him. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And to the person who said that judgment is coming on us. You better be sure that you understand what you're talking about. Because the judgment that you're announcing on us. To tell, tell you Levi. That judgment may just ju that judgment may very well visit you. Yeah. We are speaking Yah's word. We are speaking Yah's truth. And if you don't understand it, if you don't agree with it, so be it. But again, just like we said before, when you are speaking judgment on someone else, you better make sure that you have your house in order because the Most High is a righteous judge. Well, I tell you what, may the Most High judge between us and Absolutely. you. Absolutely. May He judge now between us and you. Now, <clears throat> continuing on. Now, basically, I want you to understand something that's, that's really deep about this lesson, what we're saying here, right? So, a person got to understand, Yah is a righteous judge. Yes, he is. You think Yah going to get it wrong? Do you think Yah going to make a mistake? Huh? Do you think he's going to make a mistake? You think he can't see everything? You think he don't know everything? So, when Yah makes a judgment call, he's going to get it right. That's right. And when y'all made the judgment call on the bow, he got it right. You understand what I'm saying? He right. got it right. And so that was y'all's judgment. And David was going to do it. But y'all said, don't worry about David. I got this. And he took the bow out quickly. Yes, he did. Quickly. Wow. Isn't that something? Yes, he Quickly. Is. Now, here's another example of um, um, the story of Elizabeth. Yes. The story is that's um, Luke chapter 1, 13 through 22. Now, this is a very, very clear example of how the Most High deals with situations with husbands and wives when he has a will that he is trying to put forth. This is Luke chapter 1, verses 13 through 22. <clears throat> yes. Reads as follows. But the angel said unto him, Fear not. Zachariah, for your prayer is heard, and your woman, Elisheba, shall bear you a son, and ye shall call his name Yachanan, and you shall have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of Yahuwah, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Yashrael shall he turn to El Yahuwah, Elohim. And he shall go before him in the Ruach and power of Eliyahu to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and mm -hmm. the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for Yahuwah. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my woman was well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, 
that stand in the presence of Yahuwah and am sent to speak unto you and to show you this good news. And behold, you shall be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because you believe not the word which shall be fulfilled in their season. Mm -hmm. And the people waited for Zachariah and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. Mm, mm, mm. So Yah said, okay, I got to see Yah has a way of moving people out of the way. So what Yah did was he removed mm -hmm. Zechariah out of the way by mm -hmm. shutting him up. He said, I'm going to make your tongue going to cleave to your mouth. You ain't going to be able to say nothing because you're going to interfere with the move of Yah. Yes. See, Yah got a way of shutting you men up when Yah want to bless that woman. Mm -hmm. And he got a way of shutting that woman up when Yah want to bless that man. That's right. You hear what I'm saying? It's vice versa. Yes. You can't stand in the way of what Yah wants to do. In your marriage, there's some y'all may want to deal with that woman. He may want to deal with that man a certain way. And if it's y'all doing it, you can't get in the way, women. You can't interfere. Men, you can't get in the way. Because if you do, y'all has a way of moving you out of the way or shutting you up. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you had Elizabeth who was up there in age. And her, her husband knew this. And so he was kind of like... Um, so what are you saying to me, angel? Are you saying that this old woman and I'm an old man that she's gonna bear a child? And so the angel already knew and understood that he was doubting, yeah. That he was doubting, that he wasn't believing what he was hearing. Yes. And so the angel had to intervene and cause his tongue to cleave to the roof of his mouth to keep him from speaking or saying anything negative. Wow, isn't that something? So now there we have it. There we have it. <laughs> Righteous. And unrighteous wives, Ananias, Sapphira, Priscilla, and Aquila, Jezebel, and Ahab, um, Abigail, and Nabal. Mm -hmm. There are enough stories here. Job and his wife. There are enough stories here that you can look and you can actually. And the story of Abigail was a perfect example of a woman covering her head up. Mm -hmm. She covered him up so she, she said, I'm going to make these decisions. When Nabal was the head of his family, he had already made a decision. I'm not giving them nothing. That's right. But she covered him up and said, look, I'm going to make this decision because you too dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he too foolish. The scripture called him foolish. Mm -hmm. She said, you too foolish to know what to do here. I'm going to make this decision. She went and she made that decision over her head mm -hmm. and ended up getting blessed of Yahuwah as a result of it. You can't beat that. That's the word. That's powerful right there. Mm -hmm. That is powerful. That's a powerful story. So she said this. She said, you know what? I'm not. I am not going to go down this road with you. And she kept him quiet of it. Didn't let him know nothing. He didn't probably find out until he did that because he, he had gotten drunk from some, some um, fast feast that he had. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ain't that something? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Ronald, Ronald McAllister says some women feel that they are righteous just because they read a study but don't follow all that is written. Um, that can be very true, but yeah. we want to keep it balanced right now. Yeah. Um, the same goes for men. You have a lot of men and women who feel this way. Your relationship with Yah is not just you reading or studying the Bible. It That's goes right. far beyond that. A relationship is not just reading a story in the book. I right. can't read um, an autobiography about um, Donald Trump and claim that I know the man. I just read right. an autobiography. A relationship with Yah is far more than reading. So right. when you make that statement, understand that that goes both ways. And for the most part, it's a lot of men that are teaching right now. Um, and women are following after those teachings. Okay, Not yeah. saying that women aren't, te aren't teaching because you do have women that are teaching. But that statement that you made goes for both men and women. <clears throat> that you don't know Yah just because you are reading scriptures and not even just because you're praying. That relationship with Yah uh, will definitely be something that's very well known and yeah. understood uh, just with the things that you say and do and how you reverence him and how you understand his word mm -hmm. and rightly divide his word. Um, again, you have a lot of people using the word of Yah deceitfully. They know not what they do. 
You know, I mean, you see how the scriptures talked about how the angel Michael mm -hmm. says he wouldn't even bring a railing accusation against the <laughs> devil. Against the devil, yeah. Because they understand. Even the angels understand. Look, you don't just open up your mouth just because you want to. When you open up your mouth, even against the devil, you got to understand. You can't just bring a railing accusation. You can't just call judgment on people. Yeah. You see, when you get to just call in judgment on people for whatever it is you're feeling in your flesh, okay, understand that Yah sits high and looks low, and he is a discerner of the, the in thoughts and intents yeah. of a man's heart. He is a discerner. He knows if what you are feeling or saying is of your flesh yep. or if it is of him, yeah. you see, and he judges accordingly. Yah is a righteous judge, and we have seen how righteous he has judged how righteously he has judged what for thousands of years even now in today's time yah is not playing a lot of mm -hmm. people are playing games but yah isn't watch this okay i want y'all to get what i'm saying here and pay attention right now let's say you have a man of yah that's blessed in knowledge he has so much wisdom and knowledge and understanding and he knows y'all filled with the ruach right mm -hmm. and he has his wife she's filled with the ruach but she don't have much knowledge at all. Don't know much about the scriptures at all. And she sits there and lets him teach her. And she just as humble as can be. Right? She don't know much word. Right? And let's say that man does her wrong. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All that knowledge and Holy Spirit and everything else that man got is not going to keep him from God judging him. Mm. Do you hear what I just said? Wow. All that knowledge he has, all that understanding he has, all that wisdom, and even being filled with the Ruach is not going to protect him if he does her wrong. You understand what I'm saying? If Yah stood up for the Gibeonites, who was not his people, when Saul, who was his people, killed them, trust me on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Trust me on it. That man can't do that woman wrong. I don't care. She might not have no knowledge of the scriptures hardly. Mm -hmm. He cannot do her wrong. Let me tell you something. You can have all the Ruach in you, the Holy Spirit in you, know the word and everything. You can't go out here and do a Gentile wrong. No, you can't. Because Yah will judge yes, you even will. in that. Yes, he will. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yah <laughs> is a righteous judge. That Gentile, righteous. that Gentile can cry out to Yah and say, Yah, judge between me and him. And y'all will sit there and say, well, he indeed did nothing to you, mm -hmm. but you did this to him. Now, we can go all back and forth and say, well, wait a minute. Them Gentiles have done a whole lot to our people and all that thing, right? We're talking about two individuals, mm -hmm. right? You're not talking about the groups against each That's other. That's right. So you better pay attention to the, to the right and wrong. Yah has a way of judging mm. things and judging people. Yes. And Yah will bring, he don't, that word and knowledge and all that stuff ain't going to help you if you do somebody wrong. Mm. That person had, you have opened the door up when you do somebody wrong to judgment coming. And Yah can easily, easily judge you for it. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for your word, Abba Yah. <laughs> thank it's you, Father. It's the Father. truth whether we like it or not. That's <laughs> right. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Well, family, we love you. And I hope that this lesson was a blessing. Mm -hmm. I hope that you get got something out of it. And shall, shall I say a barakin? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I heard that before, family, about wow. the, the term bless. And so. I'm going to yeah. get that term out my tongue. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And it's all throughout the Bible, all throughout Scripture. This is it's funny. Someone sent me a video yesterday. Wow. And, and uh, we had already uh, kind of talked about this when we were talking about the word nice. The etymology of the word nice and so yeah. many words in the English language, they are actual curses. You see, they are actual curses and we are using, this is why um, I say this to the Most High. Yeah. When I pray, I say, Abba Yah, I want you to go according to what I intend to say because this this language that we've, we've learned, we don't know yeah. it and we don't understand it all. And so I say, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable yes. in your sight. In other words, Abba Yah, if I do say the word nice, I want you to understand what I mean. Of course, we correct when we find out things, but if the word the means something that we don't understand, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we just keep on saying the, yeah. uh, Abba Yah, if I say the and it means something wicked, 
let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Because yes. you know I don't mean uh, what that means. When, you I, see. When, you, when we use the word bless, you know we don't mean curse. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, it just it just shines more light on words, you know, yeah. and how we got to be careful with some words. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing that, seeing the Sefer translated as curse, I mean, it's blessed when she said curse, yah. And mm -hmm. die, and they translate "bless you and die." I was like, "Whoa!" So they understand they they uh, they understood that the word "bless" and "curse" were you know pretty much. Yeah. So then, so then it's almost like, how do you even read uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight? <laughs> <laughs> Baraka. <laughs> it's like man. You notice that song the commission made yeah. uh, years ago. We will barack you. Yeah. Uh, some of you who um, have listened to the group commission, they have a song, We Will Barack You. Yeah. You know. Barack You. That was my song, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Okay, family. We love you all. We Enjoy love the you. rest of your Shabbat. Yes. With absolutely. that, we will say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>